Casual Cinecast, powered by Cinelinks. My name is Chris. And with me, as always, is none other than the greatest Pokemon trainer since Ash. Mike, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing well. I've been catching them all. Nice. I've now got them all and have surpassed Ash Ketchum, I believe was his last name. Yeah. What do you do once you catch them all? I mean... Oh, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Okay. All right. Well, that's good to hear. And Justin, uh, how are you doing on your Pokédex? Well, obviously, I'm not doing as well as Mike, who has them all. Yeah, you got to catch them all, man. That's what they say. And it it depends on what your line... You could be like, what was the doctor's name who just kind of healed him? Professor Oak, yes. So you could be like Professor Oak just healing all of Mike's Pokemon as he you know, battles them and almost kills them. Treating He's more like Team Rocket. Oh, is, is Justin Team Rocket? <laughs> He's always showing up and uh, posing at the <laughs> worst times. Yeah, yeah, Justin does do a lot of posing. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Follow me on Instagram, y'all. I don't have, I don't, I don't ever post on Instagram. <laughs> You'll be yeah. disappointed if you actually do that. I haven't even logged into my Instagram in like two years. Anyways, yeah, I... <laughs> did you have something to say about Instagram, Chris? Uh, not anything important. Okay. Usually, we like to start off every episode talking about what's on our minds, which is usually the media that we have been watching or reading for that week. But this week, we wanted to try something a little different. So if you hate it, let us know. If you like it, let us know. And this week, we are going to be talking about all the current movie news going on this week in a section we like to call News on the March. So movie nerds should get that reference, and then for our feature review, we will be reviewing Detective Pikachu. Yeah, if you don't get the news on the March reference, you need to learn your film history, people. And a good way to learn your film history is that we do a Criterion episode each month. Uh, Last month we did uh, Safety Last, and this next month we're going to be doing Stalker. And the best thing about it is that it's voted on by you, the listener. So make sure you go check out our Twitter and Instagram and Facebook for the polls. Right. And we call those episodes Casually Criterion. So they are on the same feed as this. Just scroll through and then you will see the episode labeled Casually Criterion. Click it. Listen. Subscribe. Exactly. And as Chris said, you can vote on the poll to choose our next one on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Follow us at Casual Cinecast. You can also send us questions about the movies we're reviewing each week general thoughts on the movie or whatever you can also email those thoughts and questions to casual cinemedia at gmail.com and of course if you like the show you want to help more people find it go on to itunes give us a five-star review write us a little review telling us what you think of the show and then also subscribe on whatever podcast platform that you listen to podcasts on if you haven't already be there or be square okay so are we ready to move into news on the march News on the All right, guys. So the first thing I wanted to talk about this week is actually it's been out for a couple weeks now, but uh, this week it premiered in front of Game of Thrones season eight, episode five. So I imagine a lot more people have seen it. And this is the trailer for HBO's uh, Watchmen which is the show based on the Alan Moore comic book from the 80s, uh, the graphic novel of the same name. Obviously, everyone probably knows it mostly from that movie that Zack Snyder did in 2009. And now Damon Lindelof of Leftovers fame is adapting a series based on this movie. And Lost fame. Yeah, but I think that was mostly, wasn't that mostly J.J. Abrams who was famous for Lost? I think he started it, but towards the end, it was Damon Lindelof and Carlton Cuse were like the two big showrunners for Lost. Right, but I think he likes to, I think he likes to taunt uh, Leftovers as his uh, give me street cred. Right, and it's by far superior to Lost, for sure. And I like Lost. Yeah, I was supposed to say, coming from you, that's a huge compliment. Right, but the uh, the Watchmen series, I guess it's his new thing, and... Uh, What did you guys think of the trailer? Personally, I found it intriguing. Yeah, I think intriguing is the best word for it at this point. Just because we don't have enough to really sink our teeth into. But uh, yeah, Chris, what do you think? Uh, It does the best at teasing, right? It's a teaser trailer. So, uh, but there's a lot of scenes in there. I mean, I hate to... 
it reminds me of the leftovers kind of the ominous settings and the funerals and stuff like that it just uh gave me leftover vibes and that is exciting for me because i love the leftovers yeah what's what i'm assuming about the show is that it takes place after the events of the watchman graphic novel slash movie correct which is interesting to me it looks like uh, jeremy irons is playing a older ozymandias it would seem that way yeah, but the real question is, are they going to go with the graphic novel timeline of events, or are they going to go with the um, movie events, you know? Because the endings are a little different. I wonder. That's an interesting thing, I, like with the rights and stuff, too. I wonder if they have the rights to the comic book, but perhaps not to make a sequel to the movie type of thing. I, so it, I would imagine they're going to make a sequel to the comic book yeah, rather than the movie. I would yeah, agree. There's, there's too many mixed feelings on the movie, I think, and I don't think the movie was that successful. I think it's gotten some cult status, but I think Zack Snyder is not exactly beloved right now. Right, yeah. So I think I think distancing themselves from him is probably a wise move, at least um, from their perspective. Yeah, either way, I'm such a fan of both. I'll be watching this for sure. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, so it looks like the only character that I recognize is Jeremy Irons as Ozymandias. And then all the Rorschach impersonators. Did you guys spot anything else that fans of Watchmen might uh, recognize? Did I see the the older superhero, uh, the the who's like the mother of? Uh, she's played by Carla Gugino in the movie, but I, I don't remember her name. It's like Silk Spectre or something like the that. The original Silk Spectre, yeah. The original Silk Spectre. I thought I saw someone that resembled her, but I don't. I don't know. That's really the only other recognizable like character specific that's not like that you didn't mention yeah i imagine he would be or they would be too old by now for that character to be in there but maybe the silk specter too yeah it might be that that would make more sense an older version of her yeah because ozymandias is much much older yeah he's played by jeremy irons which by the way i think is great casting yes he's who do you think Don Johnson is playing? Do you think he's playing an original character, or is he playing a new one? I don't know. One? I didn't picture any of the original characters so Southern. Uh, Don Johnson is actually probably my one worry. That makes sense. He was in uh, Dragged Across Concrete, and I didn't think he did a great job in that. And even his last line in here, like TikTok, that he said at the very end, didn't feel right to me. Well, you know, I, I didn't feel right to me either, but I don't think that's a Don Johnson fault, because I remember... When watching the trailer, I remember thinking, I mean, he's delivering this um, repeated TikTok as best as one can, but I think it's just an awkwardly stupid thing to do or say. Like, it might make sense in the actual series, but like right. in the trailer, it just seems stupid. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know. I don't know that that's a Don Johnson problem. It didn't bother me one way or the other, but it was just kind of a whatever moment to me <laughs> it's the least interesting thing in the trailer I'll, I'll give it that much do we know when it's premiering uh they have not come out with a release date it's october september that is kind of the estimates that i've when i've looked up to see when it's supposed yeah. to be coming out cool, uh, cool. the one last thing i really want to say is uh regina king is in this and she is amazing in the leftovers and i am so glad to see that she's going to be in this because uh she's she's really amazing she's oscar just, winner Regina oscar King. winner yeah so uh excited to see what she does in this all right so moving on from that the next bit of news that i think we should talk about is the star wars news that was recently released and that is that they are going to take a three-year break after the rise of skywalker and then the next film that will be released in the Star Wars movies is the first film from the Game of Thrones showrunners, David Benioff and Dan Wise. Or is it the other way around? David Benioff and Dan Wise or Dan Wise and David Benioff? D&D. &D. Oh. Yeah, D&D &D <laughs> from Game of Thrones. <laughs> um, yeah. So they are going to be in charge of a Star Wars trilogy, which is the first Star Wars trilogy hitting... There were two announced, one from Ryan Johnson and one from D&D, &D, from Game of Thrones, and no one really knew any information about when they took place, when they would be releasing, etc. And it looks like D&D &D are ready to go first because it looks like they're used to that um, quick-paced TV schedule turnaround, you know? 
Right. Yeah. When you say take a three year break, it's not like they're just not going to be doing anything for a while. It's just like three years between movie releases, which means they're going to be working their asses off in the next three years. (laughs) Yeah. For three years, they're going to be working really hard on two and a half hours or less of content Yeah, for us. (laughs) <laughs> um, different than what they're used to uh, working on like eight to ten hours of content for a year and a half <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's going to be interesting because a lot of people right now D&D aren't super popular because Game of Thrones season eight is happening right now and everyone you know is talking about how rushed it is which is undeniably true it is rushed they went from a ten episode regular season to a seven episode season and then a six episode season Right. so the difference is definitely felt But um, I'm not as worried as everyone else seems to be about these two being able to pull off two hours of great content, because the way I see it is if they can finish someone else's story that that person hasn't been able to finish in decades and they can put out roughly seven to nine and a half hours of content every year. And most of the time that content is pretty good then I'm sure that they can create their own content for only two hours in three years. Right. (laughs) You know, uh, so I'm not worried at all, but I think people are going to be trying to hate on them the way they've been hating on Ryan Johnson. Right. Over the last year and a half. I I do think whether you agree with them or not, this is going to have to be a redemption thing for them for uh, for a lot of people, because a lot of people are not going to like the ending of Game of Thrones or are not liking it. They never were. But even if they had adapted the books perfectly and the books had actually been right. finished, it would have never, people would hate yeah. the ending Agreed. of Game of Thrones. I have some questions, though. Well, I don't think we have answers. What were you going to say, Justin? I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, so I don't think we have answers necessarily to them. But so are the D&D guys going to direct it? Because I believe that's the implication. I mean, it, I've heard rumors that they might hire like directors to oversee their outline. Mm-hmm. Like they write the trilogy... And like, yeah, they're the masterminds over like the story, but they may hire other directors. They can be like the showrunners of the trilogy. Yeah, then. right. But I don't know. That's not set in stone or I don't know if that's officially announced yeah. yet. That, that's just uh, guessing. They ep- they direct episodes of Game of Thrones. So I wouldn't be surprised if they direct the first one at least. Do you have to be brothers like have, have the same last name in order to direct uh, co-direct something? I remember Robert Rodriguez and uh, Frank Miller having a, a tussle with the... Uh, I mean, I don't know what those rules are. It was it Phil Lord and Christopher Miller did, like, that, the Lego movies? That's true. There's a couple other yeah. combos out there. Yeah, there's a few combos that aren't necessarily always related that I've seen pop up. Yeah. And one thing that I will say that excites me about this... and uh, Well, I say one thing, but it's actually two things. Uh, the first one being that this trilogy is moving away from the Skywalker saga and not necessarily mm-hmm. a part of that. So we can kind of go into some Star Wars movies with very little expectation. Right. Which I think is yeah. something we've not ever had with a Star Wars film. Like I know that yeah. s- uh, Rogue One is kind of almost that, except that it is tied in with the Skywalker saga. So I'm hoping that by removing some expectations, we'll be able to look at it a little bit more objectively or at least like a lot of people will people who have expectations about other films in the star the skywalker saga and then get upset when like the films don't meet their expectations so i'm hoping that it's kind of can can everybody can look at on like even footing and there won't be so much like uh, uncalled for judgment of it (laughs) although i'm sure there will be but yeah i'm sure there will be too but i can even if i agree i hope that as well but even if that were the case i would think that that would it may be the case for the first one because people don't know what it is. They have no expectations for it, etc. Yeah. But if the first one comes out and it's good, then the fandom will inevitably be disappointed in the second and third ones. Sure. But we get one at least. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. But- so who knows? I mean, Star Wars is the most notoriously notorious fan base. <laughs> True. I, I don't even know how else to describe it. I don't want to insult them, but... Right. They don't have a good reputation amongst casual fans, you know. True. The the other thing that it excites me about this is it kind of feels like some of the like tangent uh Star Wars novels, which are the ones that I kind of liked, you know, like the uh as a, as a teenager I used to read the uh, X-Wing series a lot, which is kind of you know, it's obviously in the world, but it's pretty tangential to like the whole Skywalker stuff 
uh, that right. we know and the stuff that's in the movies. And it's different from like the other books that have Luke Skywalker and Han Solo and Leia running around doing stuff in them. I really like those a lot. These like other worlds and other stories and other characters and seeing those. So this reminds me of that. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm hoping that that's how we're getting with the Star Wars stuff. Have you have you read any of the new canon novels? Like the Disney has put out since acquiring Star Wars, the ones that are like officially referenced in Easter eggs in the movies and stuff. I read Tarkin. That's the one I've got okay. so far, and I've got Thrawn at home, but I haven't read yeah, it yet. Yeah, I have Thrawn. Thrawn is good. The first Thrawn. I've read the original Thrawn trilogy, like for the older Heir novels to the Empire that aren't canon. Yeah, yeah, that whole trilogy, yeah. and that's great. Yeah, that's what I hear. Um, the same guy, Timothy Zahn, is in charge of the Thrawn trilogy in the new canon as well. And also they brought Thrawn into the cartoon rebels. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what I've heard. Star Wars rebels. So, and he's actually really cool in that too. So if you ever get the chance, you should watch that cartoon. All right. I've been meaning to, but and maybe one day. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's game of Thrones from the game or excuse me, Star Wars from the game of Thrones guys, game of Star Wars. Right. The other thing that, I'm really excited about is the it chapter two trailer. Have you guys seen that yet? Cause I just watched it getting ready for this episode. Cause I thought about avoiding it, but then I wanted to talk about it. So I watched it. Yeah. I watched it cause it was a teaser, but I think when the official trailer comes out, I'm probably going to avoid it. Yeah. Even though it's a story that's been around forever and I've already seen the mini series when I was a kid. So kind of already know how it ends, right. but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen the mini series or read the book and I have no idea what to expect. So, uh, I'm with you. Wackiness, man. Yeah. Wackiness. Yeah, I'm with you that the teaser trailer was something I'm willing to watch, and but not the full trailer, because I don't want to know. Okay. What would you think of the teaser trailer? Oh, that was fun. I, you know, we got kind of like that nice long scene with Jessica Chastain and uh, the old lady that was kind of like fun to watch. Do you like the casting of Jessica Chastain? Uh, I do. I think it makes sense looking at it. I, I've had yeah. some other people in mind, but I think the people I had in mind were like too old too old to pull up yeah. to be like the right age. The only other person that I had in mind was um, Bryce Dallas Howard. Yeah. I'm sure that those two are always going up for parts. I to- know. <laughs> oh, I'm sure they hate yeah. each other. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, I know a lot of people said Amy Adams as well. Um, oh, the yeah, one that, been. oh, that would have been yeah. good. Uh, the one that I was thinking of really specifically and, and who I think is too old. Cause she's, I believe she's older than Amy Adams or Jessica Chastain, but uh, I believe the actress's name is Feruza Balk. Oh yeah, who is like from like the craft, and uh, she was in the Water Boy. <laughs> she was a, a Adam Sandler's girlfriend. Yeah, she's way too old. I'm pretty sure too, but like every time I, w- I watched it, Chapter One, I see that little girl, and I just see a very young redheaded version of that of her. Like they've got like the same face. So I wanted it, but it doesn't make sense. Yeah, I thought the the trailer itself was really well done because it's just like this one little scene that that's scary is all get out you know like uh with that right. old lady and and then just like a few clips of uh what's to come but I, I really love that they chose just to show that scene uh instead of showing a bunch of different stuff you know i, I really liked the trailer i thought it was really well done yeah i think teasers work best whenever it's mostly about mood yeah mm-hmm. totally and less on story so yeah i agree i'm done with it i'm already sold i was already sold before yeah. i didn't even need a trailer yeah. but i i kind of think i'll trailers should end at the teaser trailer like we shouldn't get ever full trailers because yeah. i think this is yeah. this is great unless you do it like like marvel tends to do it they may show you scenes from the movie but they're gonna alter it so you like you don't know what you're getting yeah that's true a lot of people have problems with that but like i don't necessarily no, i have the opposite because, of problems with that i have yeah i'm like i encourage that protect your secrets All right, guys. So the last thing that I wanted to talk about before we move into our review of Detective Pikachu, an update on the long-troubled, long-delayed, and thought-gone-forever live-action Akira movie. So Akira is an anime from the 80s, which is highly beloved. Um, It's based off a series of, I guess, manga or novels. And anyway, it's wonderful. It's really, really good. And for years, it has been plagued with a live action movie trying to be made from it. For a long time, there was the guys who directed um, Dead Presidents and From Hell who were going to direct it. Um, some brothers. John that... Singleton? Was it... no, nope, no, no, no. Some brothers. Oh. Um, it's like Hughes Brothers or something like that. It's yeah, not... yeah, that sounds right. They would have been bad choice. Um, 
And then I think I think Joseph Gordon Levitt was attached to star in it for a while, which actually sounded kind of neat. But ultimately, I think if you've seen the anime or read the manga, I imagine you were like me and you don't want a live action Akira adaptation at all. Something has been moving forward. Taika Watiti of What We Do in the Shadows, Thor Ragnarok, Hunt for the Wilder People fame, Internet's Golden Boy right now. He is attached to direct the newest version of the live adaptation of Akira, which will reportedly begin filming this July. (sighs) Yeah. What do you guys think about this? I know, Justin, you have thoughts, but Chris, before Justin moves into the Taika Waititi rant, (laughs) what do you think, Chris? Yeah, so I'm not going to be as negative probably as Justin is on this. I don't know that Taika Waititi is the right choice for this. So that have you have you seen Akira the anime? Yes. I, I don't know that he's the right choice for it because he's got this humor, and I haven't ever seen him really do anything that doesn't have that humor. It, I'm of the opinion that it could be good. It's like Lion King, right? <laughs> do we need it? No. <laughs> but is there a chance that it could be good? Yes. No. Also, oh, no. No chance. Yeah, I don't think so, to be honest with <laughs> uh, you. Well, I'll, I'll wait till we see it, and it could be... There are some big ideas in Akira, and I don't know if Taika Waititi is capable of handling a big idea, much less multiple big ideas. Yeah, and like I said, I'm not sure that he's the right choice, and we'll, we'll find out. Right, like, I mean, I like Taika Waititi. I like what we do in the shadows. I think Thor Ragnarok is okay. I think Hunt for the Wilder People is good. I didn't like Eagle vs. Shark at all. So, I I don't know. I'll let Justin talk. But I agree with, I don't think that he's the right guy for this job. I don't understand how he came to this, but whatever. Yeah, I think, uh, Justin, real quick before you talk, let me get my popcorn. All right, go ahead. <laughs> I like the Michael Jackson thriller gif. Yeah. <laughs> eating popcorn. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I, I'll agree with Mike about the idea thing. I mean, he got the Marvel movie that has, like, the least ideas to it in Thor Ragnarok. And... I mean to I'll I'll go with everyone else's opinion that like he's successful with that because people really like Thor Ragnarok sure Uh, I (laughs) personally don't like any of his films that I've seen which I've seen Eagle vs. Shark What We Do in the Shadows and then Thor Ragnarok and did not like any of them like not even to the point where I thought they were okay so like (laughs) this news is so bizarre to me because I like I love Akira so much and I don't want a live action film for it so it's like it's taking something i don't want and then attaching like someone who's consistently giving me things i don't like and i would not want to see another movie from any like i, I don't necessarily want to see any ytt movie let alone him adapting a movie i really love <laughs> i believe though he directed several episodes of flight of the concords yes i think he was part of that yeah and you know what my, my second watch through of flight of the concords I was much less impressed with the show. It, it didn't really hold up on a second viewing. I was kind of over it. You take that back. Midway through second season. Yeah, and I think it's so funny that you love comedy more than anyone on this podcast, but whenever a comedy doesn't work for you, <laughs> it's vengefully despised, it seems like. Yeah. Like, like you're more capable of loving a comedy more than I ever could. And right. you're also more capable of hating one. Than I ever could as well. Yeah. The other thing that's interesting too, especially with the Taika Waititi, a lot of his films are like mockumentaries, which I feel I feel like it was uh, what we do in the shadows is very similar to what was. I mean, what we do in the shadows is a mockumentary, but is does he have another mockumentary? Uh, well, Isn't the Wilder People one. No, actually, maybe no? that's the okay. only one. Okay, I just wanted to clear that up. I was I was confused. Point I was well thinking made, then. what <laughs> point well made. Well, anyways, what we do in the shadows, but uh, I was very. What was the the film that you love so much about the terrorist cells in England? Four Lions? Four Lions. I was reminded of, of Taika Waititi in Four Lions when I watched Four Lions. Right, but Four Lions is funny. <laughs> I, I will... Well, I mean, I see what you're saying, Chris. I see a little bit of the tone yeah. of Four Lions, like a Taika Waititi mm-hmm. style. But also, I think Four Lions is a little deeper... Uh, yes, agreed. ...than anything I've seen Taika Waititi do. Yeah, I will agree with that. The subject material is obviously much more... Right, and I don't want to be lumped in as, like, the podcast that hates Taika Waititi. I like Thor Ragnarok, and I like 
what we do in the shadows. Yes, me too. I, I'm not crazy about either of them, but I do think uh, what we do in the shadows especially is is pretty good. So I don't know. I am more curious about this than I am anything. But the fact that it's Akira leads me to believe that man, he is just I cannot see him being the right guy for the job. Yeah, unless they've drastically changed the film. Yeah, unless he does something completely new. <laughs> it's just which he may it's do. It's going to be a mockumentary. Because you know? <laughs> right now, I mean, like Taika Waititi seems like a pretty um, popular director, but also, you know, so was Wes Anderson when he only had four movies. The longer you go doing the same thing, the less people like you. So it's going to be interesting to see if he's able to keep this like internet um, golden boy status, you know, mm-hmm. right? two or three movies from now. Right. And I would, ex- I would explain my comedy feelings, I guess, is it's kind of like you, Mike, with action. I feel like nobody I know has disliked Taken as much as you. <laughs> oh, God, it's awful. Because... Ultimately, I think like objectively taken is pretty mediocre, which is part of its not being goodness, of course. Mm-hmm. But like in its mediocrity, you dislike it strongly even more as a fan of action, right? So it's like it's like you can kind of pick out because you like good action and you know what good action is. And like right. for me, it's like when I see bad and or lazy comedy, then that's I, you know it offends me in the same way. <laughs> no, I get it. I remember whenever I saw The Raid, like that is not a perfect movie by any stretch of the imagination. But as an action movie, I think it works like 110 percent. Right. But plot. No, who cares? You know, it's not there for plot. Right. Exactly. The plot is in the title. Yeah, I see what you're saying. It's it's basically kind of like we all have our preferences within the genre, you know, and you can appreciate what works and what doesn't. But Yeah, we'll see on Akira, I think. I, I want to be optimistic about this, but I do. Th- <laughs> it's going to be tough. But I'm not. But I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> I I want it to be good. Uh, so we'll just leave it there. Sure. All right. So now we are going to move into our review of Detective Pikachu, directed by Rob Letterman. Welcome to Rhyme City, a celebration of the harmony between humans and Pokemon. Tim, your dad was a legend in this precinct. If you were anything like your dad... I'm not. I remember. You wanted to be a Pokemon trainer when you were young. Yeah, that didn't really work out. Someone there? Whoever you are... I know how to use this. Oh, jeez. Here we go. I know. You can't understand me. But put down the stapler or I will electrocute you. All right. As always, with our feature reviews, we will be doing a non-spoiler section first. So if you haven't seen the movie, you can continue listening and we will not spoil the movie at all. And before we do get into spoilers, we'll give you a warning. We'll play a bumper so that you have plenty of time to pause the podcast and go see the movie And not hear any spoilers. So Detective Pikachu was directed by Rob Letterman, starring Ryan Reynolds, Justice Smith, and Catherine Newton. The IMDb synopsis says, In a world where people collect Pokemon to do battle, a boy comes across an intelligent talking Pikachu who seeks to be a detective. I'm just going to kick it off real quick. Sure. I'm just going to take that opportunity and just jump on it right now before you guys have a chance to say anything. So I want to say up front, I am a very moderate Pokemon fan. I was there for the first generation when I was in 6th and 7th grade, and then I was out. I had the original red version on Game Boy. I saw the first movie in theaters, had some cards, watched the show before some school, and that was the fad. You know, I was done with it. Yeah. I've often wanted to dive back into Pokemon, uh, all the mini games and the generations of Pokemon since then. But um, they've added so many Pokemon since the original 151 that I've always been overwhelmed and always opted to just play something else or read something else instead. When the movie was announced, Detective Pikachu, I wasn't even sure what to think. <laughs> um, Ryan Reynolds seemed like a weird choice. And I still think he's kind of a weird choice, even after the movie. Uh, but anyways, when this movie was announced, I was pretty much like in wait and see mode. 
ultimately, I think it ends up being okay. If you already like the Pokemon franchise, I think it's just plain bad and boring if you don't. Um, That said, it's not very bad. It's pretty watchable, but I don't think there's ever any any scenes in there that are charming enough to rise over its own shortcomings and claim new fans for Pokemon. Uh, basically, I other than little kids loving the heck out of this movie, I don't know that it's going to bring anyone else new to the table, and I don't begrudge anyone who likes it. I think the movie moves, and it's never boring, but it's also never inspired or memorable either. Uh, I do have some issues with the two lead performances with Justice Smith and Catherine Newman, who I think are both dreadful in this movie (laughs) with no charisma and no chemistry. But I mean, that's pretty minor, I guess, because little kids aren't going to care about that. It's a serviceable kids movie with a lot of nostalgia for the adults who already like the franchise. Fair enough. You know, I'm not too far from you, so I'll, I'll just go next. I think I'm a slightly bigger like original Pokemon fan than you. I did have the original versions like red, blue, yellow. I also got into the Pokemon trading card game when that first came out and I was in eighth grade. Uh, So I collected them. I played the game, that sort of thing. And then they released like a trading card game that was the card game, but in game form for Game Boy, which is weird. So it's like playing a card game (laughs) uh, and going around. Uh, But anyway, it's kind of weird, but I was very, did you play it? Yeah. Yeah. I played it a lot. Uh, Makes sense. You play Hearthstone now. So digital card games seem to be your thing. I had to quit Hearthstone, but I, (laughs) because it was too much for me to have a life outside of, but (laughs) yeah, I absolutely love card games and like digital card games, but very much into like magic when I was in middle school and a little bit, I played in college and stuff. So I, I very, really like card games, which is where the most of my love for Pokemon like fostered. And of course that card game was when it was 151 so much like you i kind of checked out when they introduced more than 151 yeah basically for me as soon as the second generation was introduced and i saw like more than like 10 or 15 new pokemon i had to learn i was like well you know what i'm done yeah (laughs) exactly this franchise has moved past me (laughs) yeah yeah that's exactly my story so i've basically been out of the game uh other than like i think i played pokemon snap with you a lot in college for some reason because it was available yeah, we on did. Nintendo Wii in like yeah, the digital store. And that was super fun. Um, yeah, it is. But again, that was nostalgic and it, it included like the original 150 one. And, um, and really there's only like 40 in that game. Yeah. What I will say about this Detective Pikachu movie, I thought the trailer like it could be good. I thought it had a little bit of promise to it. Like it might be funny. Uh, I ultimately, I'm pretty much right where you are, Mike. I think it's an okay movie with some moments that will satisfy both fans who stuck with Pokemon and learned all the new ones, but there's plenty of Pokemon from the original 151 to like give you some nostalgia. And I think that's the best thing this movie has to offer outside of that. I think it's pretty dull. It's very paint by numbers. Every thing that happens in it, you've seen happen in 40 other movies. And I think it just doesn't work because I think what you said was best, Mike, that it's uninspired because it doesn't seem like they're trying to do anything new other than here's this movie you've seen a hundred times, but here's Pokemon world to like make it bright and shiny and new feeling. Uh, Totally agree about the main performances. I also agree that Ryan Reynolds doesn't totally work for this and I like him a lot. Most people do, you know, but uh, I don't know for, for some reason, his brand of humor just felt at odds with the rest of the world and the rest of the movie and wasn't always funny. I kept waiting for him to make like a dirty joke. <laughs> and he did a couple of times. Like there's a couple of yeah, dirty jokes in there. He did. <laughs> and it took me out of the movie. Yeah. It felt at, at, out of out of place for sure. But I have a friend who is still very into Pokemon. He's a few years younger than me. I don't I actually don't really know what age he is. Exactly, but he's very, very into Pokemon, plays Pokemon Go religiously. He actually has two phones, so he can have two Pokemon Go games going. Nice. Like, the one phone is just, like, not operational except to play Pokemon Go. But that anyways. is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he posted about it the, the day that this movie came out, and he, like, went and saw it, and then he posted again, like, going back. And by the end of the day, he had a he had gone to see it four times and, like, back to back. Good Lord. What? Because he loved it. So I think the movie works for some people. So it's working for some people. I think if you're a big Pokemon fan, there's probably, I guess, a lot to like here. But I think outside of that, if you were somehow stripped that away from even the biggest of Pokemon fans, it's not a good movie. 
and at best it's okay at its best moments. So that's it for me. Wait, wait, but hang on. Here's something you and I uh, each didn't say before Chris steps in. Okay. What is it at its worst? Oh, is it a bad movie or still just an okay movie? No, at its worst moments, it's bad. Okay, I think. Cool. Just, just making sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And not all of the moments are bad. Mostly it's okay, but there are some bad moments for sure. Yeah. But I can also see little kids loving it. So if you have a kid and like a young kid and you're a parent, go see it if you're curious at all. Yeah. All right. Go, go ahead, Chris. What do you think? All right. Yeah. I am a little bit older than you guys, so I did not have the Pokemon experience that either one of you did. I remember watching it, the TV show, like when I was home at sick, like from school, you know, but I never really went out of my way to watch it. I played Pokemon Go recently, like uh, when it first came out, I remember going to the park <laughs> and there was, everybody was staring at their phone as they went around trying to catch Pokemon. And I actually thought that experience was pretty cool because everybody, anyways, yeah, I don't play Pokemon Go anymore. I have friends that play Pokemon Go a lot. This movie may not be for me. I also have a story, a story of woe. I went and saw this movie on Sunday, and I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! I, I should have had coffee. Uh, that's my fault. But like, uh, I was like, I was already kind of falling asleep. I went and saw it at the Dolby at the AMC that I'm at, so it was already really loud. But I kind of was falling asleep in the pre-show announcements, you know. And I remember I saw like like the probably the first ten minutes of Poke of the movie, and then I uh, I fell asleep and I missed probably the first act, and I woke up and watched the rest of it. I will say that I went back the next day and stayed awake through the whole thing. So I've watched this movie, like two and two thirds of a time now because I just wanted to make sure that I, you know, got the whole thing. But you mean one, one, one and two thirds of a time? Thirds. Or did you actually go uh, yeah. three times to see this movie? One and two thirds. My math's not great, obviously. Uh, anyways, so I am pretty much on the same page as you guys. I think <laughs> that they're one of the redeeming qualities about this movie and he may not fit in the movie like you were saying, Justin, but one of the redeeming qualities is Ryan Reynolds because I feel like even though his voice acting it's the only source of charm, you know, <laughs> that's in this movie, because I agree with you about Justice Smith and the girl. The, the, the girl's been in other things. I think that this is probably uh, maybe on the director a little bit because the girl's been in. She was in that HBO show with Nicole Kidman. Big Little Lies. Yeah, Big Little Lies. And I haven't seen that, so I guess I don't know exactly, but I feel like everybody was pretty solid in that. Yeah, everyone says that show's great, so yeah. I assume she's at least good in it. Yeah. Yeah. I watched the first episode, and I think I remember what character you're talking about, but... She's also in Blockers. She's John Cena's oh, yeah, daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so she was good in Blockers. That's where yeah. I remember her from. Okay. But anyways, um, I think there's a couple of gags that really work, uh, one involving a mime, and I felt that that was really fun. Yeah, that's my favorite part of the movie, my favorite yeah. scene. Yeah, exactly. But other than that, you're right. It feels uninspired. It feels like... Because I, I think the film, at least the CG of the film, looks good. I think the the Pokemon look great. As far as story, like somebody should have gone over it again once they got Ryan Reynolds on board or whatever. But it just... The story doesn't work, and the two leads are, are not very good. I, I don't have a lot more to say except for... I, I guess if you're a Pokemon fan, but even then I think... Uh, I mean, maybe it's like Roger Rabbit. It's getting to see these Pokemon in real life or in a way that they're interacting with people. For adults, it's more like the novelty of it. Yeah, but I, I just don't... They could have done better things. Like, just reading the IMDb synopsis, I was more interested in the IMDb synopsis because in a world where people collect Pokemon to do battle, already there's a lot of conflict there. You know, like, people are collecting Pokemon to make them battle each other. That's something that we could talk about, you know? Yeah. What are the moral yeah. implications? Uh, and so, yeah, I, I think they missed... The, and I guess maybe they can't do that because this is based on another video game called Detective Peach, Pikachu. So yeah. maybe they couldn't do that. But anyways... They take us into a world where... Pokemon and people get along and that's not allowed essentially. So they take away like the most interesting hooky part of Pokemon. 
Yeah, they didn't. They didn't bother adapting like the the main games. Like they actually did like some weird side game, which is like a really interesting way to approach it. But as a result, I think it it probably works better as a movie this way because video games don't usually make the best movies. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> yeah, maybe it's better that you take like a little niche video game instead of like a, a broad video game. Yeah, I mean, it's not a concept that turns me off. I mean, obviously, we all agreed to cover it on the podcast, right? And there are other movies that we've decided against covering, things like Dumbo, things... What was the movie last year with uh, the spy who dumped me? Like, we all we kind of talked about maybe covering that one, and it was pretty quickly downvoted, right? So, like, there's an interesting concept here that I think it's a little disappointing that they didn't do at least a little bit more with it. Like I didn't go in expecting to love the movie, but I thought it could be surprisingly enjoyable and it wasn't. Let me ask ask you this. As far as video game adaptation movies go, is this the best? Is this um, somewhere in the middle? Where do you guys stand on that? I think it's on par with that Tomb Raider movie. Oh yeah. We watched last year. Sure. Yeah. Which is one I didn't like. Yeah. End of day. No, but, uh, I don't think any two and a half that much. A, a two and a half star movie is, is kind of what I I'd say. Like it's good if you want it to be good, and I would not begrudge you for thinking that. Yeah, correct. But if you're not a fan of the franchise already, it's probably not going to be a good enough movie to sell you on the franchise or the movie. Yeah, yeah. I think we've said it before, but its best moments are seeing Pokemon that you used to know and seeing them like interact yeah. in funny ways, like. There's some clever gags with it, like, and this is in the trailer, but the, um, I think it's a Machamp, the fighter one that has like multiple arms. Like, his yeah. job in the city is directing traffic, and it's funny because he has multiple arms. Like, there's some kind of cutesy yeah. stuff like that that's kind of enjoyable. Yeah, agreed. Like, with a Pokemon, like, living side by side next to humans in this one city in the whole planet where Pokemon can live equally and not be captured and made to fight. Yeah. So, like, you'll see Pokemon in society with, like, unique jobs based on their powers. It's all very um, cool and creative to, like, see the montages and various shots throughout the city. Yeah. It's one of the things that I really loved when I was first watching BoJack Horseman is the way that they integrate animals into society as we know it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that is much more successful than Detective Pikachu, of course. (laughs) I agree. But I think one of the most successful things about Detective Pikachu is the um, world building that they do. Totally. To jump off that real quick, I actually like the way the Pokemon look in this, which has always been like the thing that everyone's been curious about. If they're ever going to do a live action Pokemon movie, what will they look like? You know, how would they do it? Mm -hmm. And I think they realize them in a way that keeps their same, you know, anime cuteness, but also makes them be able to interact next to people. Yeah, they look real. Yeah. And Pikachu uh, is just as adorable in live action as he is in the video games. So, yeah, they they avoid trying to make them too realistic where it ends up looking like bad attempt at realistic CG. It's like they did find the, the, yeah, the not right hanging balance. Out like a mutant rat. That's like a yellow. Yeah. So I'm, I'm with you on that. I will commend them because that I didn't, I don't know that I thought about it while watching the movie, but I certainly didn't think about it. So that's, that's a, an accomplishment in my opinion. I also enjoyed Mewtwo. I think, um, the coolest looking Pokemon was Mewtwo. Yeah. And, I have a quick question, which I don't think is spoilery. Is this in the same canon as the first anime movie? Because they mentioned that Mewtwo was created about 20 years ago, which is right about the time when the first Pokemon movie came to theaters. Yeah, Pokemon 2000? Was that the first one? No, I think it's just Pokemon the first movie is what it was called. Okay. Well, yeah, I think I got that vibe, even though I haven't seen the other one. I got the vibe that they were hinting about other Pokemon canon. I kind of got that vibe too, but I don't. It's not going to take away your enjoyment if you're not familiar with the games at all. All right, quick tangent. What is Mewtwo's character? Because I didn't really get much of a character except for that he hated humanity. So, what is his character in the other movies? He is a very powerful man made Pokemon that was created off of a Pokemon named Mew. Okay. Which is supposedly an ancient Pokemon, but. Spoiler alert, is still around in some places. But Mewtwo is a psychic type. Like, every Pokemon has a type, like electricity, fire, plant, water, Mm -hmm. rock, etc. Well, Mewtwo is psychic. And he is, I guess, the most powerful Pokemon, or one of. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There's a million Pokemon now. But in the original 151, Mewtwo was like the cat's meow. (laughs) 
And um, <laughs> uh, yeah, and then the first movie came out and he was the subject of the first movie. He's a man-made experiment, doesn't like humanity too much because why would you if you're a man-made okay. experiment? You know, etc. That old story. Tale as old as time. Yeah, so I think we can just about move on to spoilers unless anybody has anything else. I do not. Nope. Yeah, I think let's do it. Yeah, I think as you said, I don't think any of us really recommend it for the average movie watcher. But if you have kids, I think it's not the worst movie you could take your kids to see. Like in terms of having to sit through it as an adult, mm-hmm. it's not the worst. But you you know you're not going to watch it again by yourself. Right. Or in my situation, so, you could get a quick nap. There you go. Right. Yeah. And also, if you played the original video games at all. And you are curious as of to what Pokemon look like in a movie? Go see it. Yeah. Get, maybe it's worth seeing to like support the attempt of doing something that's not quite that direct uh, video game remake as we've talked about earlier, like the direct like to the original major game. They tried to do something yeah. a little different, and it it's it's like it almost worked. <laughs> Right, that would be like if they made a movie about Laura Croft trying to like get a job. <laughs> That'd be so awesome. <laughs> I want to see that movie. <laughs> yeah, or like I don't know, perform in real life. So yeah, I get what you're saying. It's not like a remake of the story that most people are going to be familiar with. Yeah, exactly. And so that's that's worth commending. But agreed. All right, so let's go into spoilers then. Let's do it. No, I guess Rosebud is just a piece in a jigsaw puzzle. Hey, cigarettes you got up there, I'll tell you all about it. Things are going to start happening to me now. And here we go. Okay, so I don't have a whole lot for spoilers, guys, so this may be a very short section, but did you guys see the twist coming about Pikachu being his father in the same body? Like, I didn't see it coming right away but as soon as they introduced the concept of people merging with pokemon Mm -hmm. the villain's final plan i was like oh that's his dad yeah yeah that's when it becomes very obvious Um, so i mean they hit it well enough until that point but i think they also played it up as supposed to be surprising when it happens much later (laughs) well i mean for a little kid and for some parents i imagine they were surprised you know yeah yeah, yeah. i don't think that made it any less satisfying though like, because even though I didn't like the movie, I thought it was kind of a sweet moment mm-hmm. later. Yeah, I, I, agreed. I don't know that it was earned, so it didn't have like the impact. You know what I mean? On paper, I was like, OK, this is very nice. Right. Yeah, I think that's where I come down to is like um, it feels like a cheap moment, a little manipulative, but also it works. There's no reason not to. It's a kid's movie. Make it happy. Were you guys uh, a little bummed out that the Pikachu wasn't going to be able to talk to him anymore? I, I always find in movies like this. <laughs> like Beauty and the Beast even like when they're transferred back to their original form I'm a little disappointed I'm like oh I liked them better when they were the other person <laughs> you know like right. yeah I want to be a candlestick on a clock yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah, you spend a whole movie getting to know and enjoy and you know fall in love potentially with like a character yeah and then they change and they're no longer that person yeah and I'd rather I'd, I love the idea of having a little Pikachu that you can talk to yeah, who needs a dad when you could have a talking Pikachu? Yeah, he exactly. seemed fun. Yeah, and he's got that girlfriend who you know they end up kind of liking each other or something towards the end of the movie for no discernible reason that I could figure out. <laughs> they're both on par at acting, so they're like, you know what? <laughs> I identify. We're with both you. mediocre actors. Yeah. We have mutual interest in figuring out some Pokemon stuff, so we are in love. <laughs> You're the only other female yeah. uh, in this movie, so. <laughs> Yeah, I did enjoy true. the, I did enjoy the uh, scene in the bar. I don't remember what the hell the main, main character's name is. Justice uh, Smith bumped into her and she dropped all her stuff. When she's trying to be sneaky. Yeah, and then like Pikachu, as soon as he gets back in the booth, Pikachu's like, "I'm sorry, I ever encouraged you. You're hopeless." <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, totally bringing him down after that moment. That made me laugh. Yeah, I did think the movie started off but with like some good potential with that first scene where they're going to catch like the cubone the, mm-hmm. the main character and his friend because I, I also like yeah the, uh, that guy who plays his friend he's in safety not guaranteed and deadpool and deadpool yes and he's i think he's a pretty funny guy and so i enjoyed that opening scene uh, i thought okay maybe from here 
we go somewhere. But I, I do think the movie almost peaked there and then it peaked again with like the little the mime scene and yeah. them grilling the mime, which I think was really funny. I enjoyed the Mewtwo stuff. I think Mewtwo looks cool when he's moving around and his eyes are glowing and he's doing all kinds of like weird psychic stuff. But I didn't love it, you know, but I think sure. it looks cool visually. I think it's a it's a treat to watch. And I also liked I mean, the sequence, I don't think makes sense in the story of the film, but I, I did like the sequence where they're on those like giant turtles and they start moving. <laughs> like, I don't think it makes logical. Oh yeah. The mountains. Yeah. Logical sense in the story. Like it's just there to be there because they don't ever explain. Yeah. I was confused cause I wasn't sure what those Pokemon were. Yeah. Those are new ones out of the 151. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did like it though. I thought it remind him kind of in, of inception, you know, like with the earth moving around and stuff like that. I think the movie sure. looks good. Yeah, I also liked the scene where they go down the river and, and see a pack of wild Bulbasaur. <laughs> yeah. It reminded me of Pokemon Snap. Right, yeah. It, there's also something about that scene where, like, I think that scene would have been a lot cooler set at night because they had little glowy creatures. And so mm. I thought there was something kind <laughs> yeah. of visually lacking about glowy creatures during the day. You know what I mean? I think they were just so jazzed about putting realistic Pokemon into a frame that they weren't thinking about lighting dynamics. Right. I guess that's that's fair enough. And you got to walk before you can run, Justin. <laughs> yeah, I'll hold out hope for the next Pokemon movie, yeah. whatever that is. Detective Pikachu 2. Yes. Going back to the turtle scene, one thing that I didn't understand is they go into this building where they're experimenting and they have this glass cage that's in front of the turtles that is like I guess keeping them from getting into the building, I guess, which is okay, but like they go through the glass and then there's just like little flappy curtains like when you walk into like a refrigerator. I did notice that. Separating the turtles <laughs> from the outside. Yeah. So I was like, I mean, I guess it keeps the turtles from getting into the building, but like those turtles can just like get up and wander out of those flaps and like never come back. So I, I just didn't understand how that worked. Well, I guess they have, haven't they? Because they're they're the earth, right? That they're, they're walking on at that point. The Just the bigger versions of them, right? I guess. I don't know. And maybe they built, why would they build their building on the, that turtle back thing? I don't know. Maybe they didn't. It was just kind of hard to tell, like the geography of that whole thing. Yeah, that sequence didn't make a lot of sense. The one other thing in, that fills paint by numbers to me, other than, you know, the him and the girl having to kind of fall for each other, regardless of whether or not there's any reason for them to, or it seems like they actually like each other. The other thing that kind of bugged me was the whole Bill Nighy is actually the bad guy thing one of the most uninspired things in the movie because it's that's one of the things I think we've seen 40 times before is like the guy that you think is the good, good guy the whole time. <laughs> I'll also say last thing I've got and I don't really have it on my notes but it just I just thought about it but like Ken Watanabe as like the detective thing I was like what a waste of Ken Watanabe. Yeah I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah. Because <laughs> that character is pretty useless other than but i mean i would rather watch ken wantanabe in this than uh that godzilla movie that came out a few years back and probably the sequel yeah he's also kind of wasted in that too he's just there to say godzilla let them fight we'll be talking about godzilla very soon won't we yeah i think so yeah we will but yeah that's it that i have on detective pikachu uh me too that's it me too me too me too all right, so no what's on our mind this week. We're going to go ahead and call it done here. Sound good to you guys? It does. But I've got so much on my mind. Save it for next week. Uh, there's always next week. Yeah, there will be plenty of, to talk about next week, I think, with certain shows coming to an end and other things. Yeah. All right, well, thank you guys so much for listening. And then, of course, as always, thank you, Jake Wagner Russell, for doing our intro and outro music. If you'd like to hear more of his music, you can do so at soundcloud.com slash bopscotch. Yes, uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Next week, we will be reviewing John Wick 3. The Wickening. That means I gotta watch John Wick 2. I know. Hope it's not too much to handle. I hope it's not three much to handle. I think it'll be over really wick. <laughs> Good one. Thank you. <laughs> I, I'm out of puns. Yeah, thanks so much for listening, guys, and we will talk to you next time. <laughs> Bye-bye. See you later.